Hello again. Whenever I mention some particularly brutal murder involving young men, somebody is sure to pipe up and say, well, what about the teddy boys? They carried knives. Modern gangs are no worse than them. You only go on about this because they're black. This is a fair point, but such people are seldom old enough actually to remember the 1950s. I do. It's true that there were hooligans in the 1950s and 1960s and that these were all white. The things which they did, though, do not bear the least resemblance to what is seen with modern gangs, most of whom are black or from some other visible minority. What did the mods and rockers get up to in the early 1960s? They went to the seaside and threw deck chairs around at places like Margate. Seriously, that was about the limit of it. There were a few punch-ups as well. What about the teddy boys? They used to carry knives, but these were usually only for slashing the seats in cinemas and railway carriages. This was a big thing at the time, cinema seats being slashed open by young hooligans. It was almost inconceivable that these boys would stab anyone. There was one such murder, of course, on Clapham Common in 1953, the so-called Ploughboys murder, but that was about it. Everyone remembers that murder, but it wasn't typical of what was going on with the Teddy Boys at all. Fist fights, breaking windows, scuffling with the police sometimes. These things were about the limit of the Teddy Boys and the mods and rockers who came after them. Let's look at a few recent cases of what young gang members get up to these days and compare this with the slashing seats in cinemas, shall we? Let's start with Chadwell Heath in East London, a place I know well as I grew up in Seven Kings, just down the road. On Wednesday, 19-year-old Carlton Tanua was sentenced to life imprisonment for the murder of 16-year-old Tyler Hurley on a bus in Chadwell Heath. He had hacked the boy to death with a so-called zombie knife. Both youths were black. Earlier this month, a tourist Kirpis was sentenced to life imprisonment for stabbing to death Paulio Caralius. These men were both foreigners. This was in the London borough of Tower Hamlets. On December the 9th, Abid Raham and Yusuf was convicted of the murder of 18-year-old Yaha Sharif in Birmingham by stabbing him. This murder was connected with rap music, by the way, as was that of Tyler Hurley. A few days ago, Jonathan Cox was convicted of stabbing to death Carl Wright. Both teenagers were black. And on the domestic front, the day before yesterday, Charlotte Kerr was convicted of stabbing to death Giovanni Wallace. She's black, he was foreign. These are just five random murders of which people were convicted in the last couple of weeks. In 1960, the total number of homicides, that is to say murders, infanticides and manslaughters, in England and Wales was 300. Last year it was 600. <coughs> in all five of the cases mentioned, only black people and foreigners were involved, which is fairly typical. This tells us, of course, nothing in general about either black people or foreigners, but it does tell us a great deal about murder and manslaughter in modern Britain. I give links to news items about all these cases in the description to this video. To suggest that the gangs of youths in the 1950s bore the slightest resemblance to modern gangs is absurd. Something has changed, and the chief thing, the chief thing which has changed, is that people in this country at that time usually murdered family members. These days, there's an increasing tendency to kill people to whom the killer is not related. There's not the least doubt that this is a real trend. That is to say, twice as many murders in the country as there were 60 years ago, and an awful lot of them committed by foreigners, immigrants, and children from immigrant families. People hesitate to draw attention to this, though, or indeed even to acknowledge it. One reason is that our language has been commandeered without our being aware of it. 
<coughs> this was one of the aims, of course, of Newspeak in 1984, that in the end, the language would be so restricted that there wouldn't even be any words for certain concepts, so people wouldn't even be able to frame their thoughts in a rebellious fashion. Some readers might have noticed that the word immigrant is now slightly suspect, and if you talk about immigrants, people look at you as though you're on a recruiting drive for the National Front or something. They are migrants or asylum seekers these days. Then too, the words foreign and foreigners have also been edged out of polite usage. <coughs> we talk now not of foreign books, but of world literature. This is, of course, the global perspective which we are expected to embrace. Saying that many of the most shocking murders in this country are committed by foreigners and immigrants automatically sound racist because of the changing use of language, whereas it is really just describing how things are in a fairly neutral way. By the way, there seems to be a silly rumour that I've blocked Bob Wilkins from this channel. There isn't a word of truth in it, of course. It's all a staged performance. Yesterday he posted the same long rambling statement 46 times in the comments here, which is spamming by anybody's definition. It's irritating, but I didn't do anything about it. I think he hoped that I would block him, but when I didn't, he told people that I had. It's just one more example of the mad lies that some left-wing types simply cannot help themselves telling. <coughs> 